Florida has been known for its magnificent saltwater fishery and giant bass for decades. They have attracted tourists from all over the world to come and take part in this world-class fishery that the Sunshine State has to offer. 30 years ago, Florida's rivers were a different place than they are today. Few people bothered leaving their home state rivers to venture to Florida to fish its rivers when their rivers were much more productive for multiple species. Sometime in the early 80s, fishermen started seeing a new fish popping up in the northwest Florida rivers that they had never seen before. Biologists were called in to study this strange fish and came to the conclusion that this fish was none other than Pylodictus olivaris, the flathead catfish. They monitored the predator fish as it worked its way from river to river, decimating local sunfish populations, earning itself a spot on Florida's most unwanted list. It took the flathead catfish only 10 years to completely dominate the Escambia and Apalachicola rivers. Locals and biologists feared the worst. They feared the flathead would eradicate sunfish populations to the point of extinction. But something funny began to happen. Instead of completely wiping out the sunfish like biologists were claiming they would, locals started reporting catching bigger sunfish and more numbers of them than they had ever before. The reports fell on deaf ears as Florida declared a jihad on this new ugly river invader. Flatheads were shot, gutted, and slaughtered by kill tournaments and Florida biologists for almost 20 years, spending millions of dollars to try and eradicate this fish only to fail in the end. They hypothesized the repeat of electroshocking efforts in a small river on a small population may effectively reduce the flathead catfish populations and prevent large populations seen in other introduced rivers. In quote, it took Florida many years to come to this conclusion. Despite electrofishing effectiveness at collecting flathead catfish, we believe it has limited practical applications in the control of introduced flathead catfish populations in Florida. FWC quote, in quote. Escambia is now home to some of the largest catfish in the state of Florida. If not for the kill tournaments on the Apalachicola River, the Appalachian would probably hold fish 80 pounds today, with fish topping 100 pounds. Flatheads have now occupied Escambia River for well over 30 years. Their population is well established on every stretch of Escambia River and Apalachicola River. The tall tale of vanishing sunfish are far-fetched as Volkswagen-sized catfish blow dams. In fact, it's completely the opposite. The Scambia River has a thriving sunfish population. And anywhere you go on the river, you can find more bluegills than you could ever care to catch. This is the same on the Apalachicola River and Yellow River and all other rivers where flatheads have invaded or have been stocked in the past around the country. The initial shock of the large predator always catches locals and biologists off guard. Their first reaction is, the river will be destroyed. And this is the way of thinking that is completely false. It is a fact that sunfish populations will drastically decline in the beginning, but over time the river will adapt to this new predator and a new error will begin to emerge. Flatheads bring order to a river that once had none. Florida's rivers were once overpopulated with small sunfish that ran wild consuming all invertebrates that they had come in contact with, including small fryling, largemouth bass, and other sunfish. Bluegills occupied all the deep holes. Most sunfish averaged small, much smaller than the today's standard. Shortly after the flathead invasion, sunfish began to adapt to their new predator. They now slept in the shallows, or under willows, and avoided deep holes in the night. Flathead swept through, consuming all the weak and frail sunfish, leaving behind a much stronger gene pool of sunfish to grow into some of the largest the state has ever seen. This same trend has taken place on countless rivers across the United States that were once void of flatheads. Even with the evidence mounting that flatheads are actually the balancing factor most rivers need, they are still frowned upon by state officials simply because they are not as glamorous or as pretty as the bass or temperate species that Florida finds so fond of. Florida even stopped peacock bass and implemented regulations to protect this invasive species simply because of how much money the fish draws to the state and its so-called ability to control tilapia. 
20,000 butterfly peacock bass fingerlings were stocked in the major canals of southwest Florida between 1984 and 1987. If more states could see that growing trophy catfish will attract nearly as many tourists as bass, maybe and only then will flatheads and blue cats get the respect they deserve as a true sport fish. States such as Alabama and many others have seen the possibilities that catfish bring to the table and how important they are and are now, only after decades of slaughter, finally implementing strict regulations protecting this species. The trophy cat population have exploded in these states, attracting tourists from all over the country to take part in this hunt. Alabama now holds a sustainable population of 100 pound cats. Alabama offers endless amounts of sunfish living and thriving right alongside of these apex predators and perfect balance ecosystems. South Carolina stocked flatheads in the 60s and today is ranked as one of the world class destinations for trophy catfish. Yet it also holds a thriving sunfish population. Flatheads entered the Colorado systems in the 70s and today yield trophy flatheads to rival many other states that have had flatheads since the beginning. There are still a few rivers that flatheads have only occupied since the late 90s and these states are blindly using the same tactics to remove flatheads as Florida and other states that once tried and abandoned. You cannot eliminate flatheads. It only takes two fish to start the whole process over again. It's a big waste of taxpayer dollars to let the river systems balance themselves out. But what you can do is decimate your trophy cat population. Another way states can balance out the rivers and take the pressures off the local sunfish population is to stock some sort of food supply for these large predators such as gizzard shad. The cats will quickly start to focus their attention on the newly introduced shad and pull back their assault on local fish. This is also the case for other commonly stocked fish that states consistently stock. Florida stocks striped bass each year in certain rivers that do not have a sustainable shad population. In turn, they have to keep stocking stripers each year, spending tons of money because the stripers won't maintain a healthy population. Granted, gizzard shad should never be stocked on a body of water that does not have a large predator to keep them in check. Gizzards grow quickly and become too large for bass and other fish to consume if left unchecked by catfish or any other large predator. Example, the St. Johns River in Florida has recently exploded with gizzard shad and once again the state has stepped in to try to eradicate them. The river is void of large catfish but the gizzard shad have no predators to balance their exploding population. Blue cats would be the balance this river would need, in turn would draw in tourists from around the country. In conclusion, the invasive flathead follows a very predictable pattern when introduced to new bodies of water. They first divide and conquer, eliminating the weak and overcrowded sunfish population. Over the course of some years, the rivers begin to balance out. Flatheads will soon start to keep their own populations in check by actually consuming other small flatheads. In the end, you are left with a much more balanced river and ecosystem than ever before. Flatheads bring order to chaos. This pattern has come to pass all across America. Rivers were once void of flatheads are now thriving with flatheads and bluegills all in harmony living together. Tell your state to grant them amnesty and welcome them as locals. With a healthy population of catfish, everyone wins.